What's going on guys? Ryan O'Toole back here again, giving you guys the end of the year list. We have finally come to the moment of the year that I've been looking forward to and you guys as well, giving you guys my top 10 best movies of 2018. Thank you guys so much for making 2018 one of my favorite years for my channel in a while. I've met so many great people, so many great videos on my channel. And for movies in general, it's been a great year for movies. I don't think it's as good as last year, but still, there's a lot of great movies on my list. These are my top 10 best movies of 2018. They're my favorites. These are my opinions. Film is completely subjective. We all have different opinions here on YouTube. So many of the movies on here, some of those movies may not be on your guys' list, and that's completely fine. Let me know your best list down below in the comments section. There may be a movie in my list that I gave a 5 out of 5 stars that you may be like, okay, why isn't that in the top 10 list and in the honorable mentions? Well, that's because I felt the movie deserved that grade. But maybe on rewatch it doesn't hold up. Maybe it's not a film I could rewatch constantly. And that's not a bad thing. These are just movies that I love myself. My own personal list. Before I start the top 10 list, let me show you my honorable mentions. I have nine of them, and they are Instant Family, Hereditary, Eighth Grade, Upgrade, Paddington 2, Ready Player One, Creed 2, First Man, and Bumblebee. All great movies. It was really hard to try to get them on my list, but I absolutely love them. Now, let's get started with my top 10 best movies of 2018. Ah! It means fire, Robert. One of the best sequels this year was Incredibles 2. This was the sequel that everybody has been looking forward to and anticipating from Pixar. And it absolutely delivered. Brad Bird's direction, him coming back after doing the first one, was just even better than the first one in my opinion. It seems unpopular, but it's true. The Incredible Family's great. Jack-Jack steals the whole entire film. The raccoon scene is just perfect. There was also a lot more Frozone, which I wanted more in the first one. And Samuel Jackson's great. Edna Mode gets an incredibly awesome scene. The action sequences are amazing. The opening scene is great. The boat scene was intense and awesome. And the only really issue is with the main villain, Screen Slaver, who isn't terrible, but she could have been a lot more better written and she was extremely predictable. Other than that, Incredibles 2 is fantastic. One of the best films this year. Stallworth Brothers. We're on a roll, baby. Spike Lee, you done it again, sir. Black Klansman, I believe, is your best film. This movie is incredible. It is so well written. It is one of the most fantastic ideas for a film in a while. Ron Stallworth, played by John David Washington, who should get an Oscar nom, by the way, is incredible. The movie flattened me on my back. I did not expect anything in this movie. Knowing nothing about Ron Stallworth in this true story of how he infiltrated the KKK with Adam Driver's character. Adam Driver was also great. Spike Lee has his own way of telling his stories with his snappy, witty dialogue. Some people complained about the ending. I thought the ending was pretty powerful, but yeah, it wasn't necessary. Overall, Black Klansman really surprised me. I did not expect to love this movie as I did, and it's totally worth seeing if you haven't seen it. We're far from the shallow now. A Star is Born delivered. Bradley Cooper, this was his directorial debut in Everybody was so looking forward to this. It was coming out at the perfect time come Oscar season. Bradley Cooper's performance is absolutely terrific as Jackson Maine, this really flawed drunk artist who was at the top and now he's going to the very bottom in life. And then he meets Lady Gaga's character. Lady Gaga was absolutely phenomenal in this film and deserves the Best Actress Oscar. The songs were absolutely great. I'll always sing Shallows now because it's such a terrific song. The drama to this movie is so realistic. Sam Elliott was also terrific. 
And Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle has an awesome scene. It went in some great unpredictable routes that I didn't expect coming. It made me want to guess what's going to happen next. And it just really surprised me. Bradley Cooper, I hope he directs more because A Star is Born is a masterpiece. Black Panther is one of the most realistic comic book adaptations. Bringing in this African culture, this world of Wakanda, just getting us so invested into this world. The technology in Wakanda is unbelievably awesome. And Ryan Coogler absolutely knocked it out of the park here again. Three for three. Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther. He may not have been as good as he was in Civil War, but still, he's great in this movie. Michael B. Jordan as Eric Killmonger stole the whole entire film. This villain was completely realistic. You totally understand his motivations and where he's coming from. I would say my only real issues with the film is that it killed off one of my favorite characters, Ulysses Claw, Andy Serkis. Man, that guy gets killed off in every freaking movie. And some people do complain about the CGI in the last final act with Killmonger and Black Panther's fight. Yes, that does look pretty obvious. They could have improved some of the CGI, I do agree. But still, that does not bother me. Black Panther is fantastic, and it could be getting a Best Picture nom. It's great! Oh. Is what makes you Spider-Man. Officer, I love you. <laughs> Wait, what? After so many Spider-Man movies, I was just getting Spider-Man fatigued. I was just sick and tired of seeing a new Spider-Man movie. The Sam Raimi trilogy was great until 3. The Amazing Spider-Man movies were disappointing and Spider-Man Homecoming was a little underwhelming at times, but now seeing a new Miles Morales Spider-Man animated film from Sony, I was not really excited going into this, but Damn, did this movie shock the hell out of me. This movie is fantastic. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse delivered the Spider-Man character done right. But not with Peter Parker, but with Miles Morales. Miles Morales was so great. Shameik Moore was great as the voice. You really do care about what Miles is going through with his family, being a high schooler, and being a superhero. And all the new characters. Spider-Gwen was great. Spider-Man Noir. Nicolas Cage. Make him a movie. Kingpin was my only issue with the film. He was a really bad villain, forgettable, could have done better. I can't wait for the sequel to this. They're already talking about it, and it's going to be great. This movie is fantastic. Go see it. Well, you can do that. What do we do about the bones? Green Book delivered, man. This movie was so great, so emotional, and so funny at the same time. Peter Farley, the director of Dumb and Dumber 1 and 2, delivering an Oscar-worthy film is just so heartwarming. Viggo Mortensen and Mahershala Ali, I really didn't see the chemistry going in, but man, they have such good chemistry. They should do more movies together. This is Driving Miss Daisy done right. Peter Farley really told a great story, a true story that delivered and made me near cry towards the end, and I need to see this film again because it's so damn good. Shh. A Quiet Place. In my top five, A Quiet Place is terrific. John Korzynski, this is his first horror film he's directing. Jordan Peele to Get Out last year, which made my top 10 list. And this is the Get Out this year. What Krasinski does with the scares to this movie is completely unsettling. The score is unsettling. This whole movie is 95% silent. That's how a horror movies should be done. Completely suspenseful. Emily Blunt is terrific. She should get an Oscar nom for this and Mary Poppins Returns. The kids were terrific and not annoying. In this movie... Had me on the edge of my seat the whole entire time and not wanting to make any noise whatsoever. And you shouldn't do. I didn't know her. I didn't know my daughter. Yeah, you guys didn't see this coming, did you? Searching is my number three. Damn. This movie flattened me on the 
back. It punched me in the face five times because I didn't see anything coming. The first time watching this movie was terrific. But rewatching it a second time skyrocketed to number three. John Cho gives the most underrated performance this whole entire year. His character is so likable. You want this guy to succeed. You want him to find his daughter. He gives such a great realistic performance when he's getting emotional and angry. You're on his side the whole entire time. So many twists and turns. The plot twist I didn't see coming from a mile ahead. The score is unsettling. The opening scene to this movie broke me down into tears. I'm not even lying to you. It's better than Gone Girl as one of the best found footage films ever. This movie is fantastic. If you have not seen Searching, watch it. thought this was going to remain my number one, but Avengers Infinity War delivered. I don't care what you guys say, oh, Ryan's a superhero fanboy, he's so biased. This movie completely surprised me. Going into Avengers Infinity War, the 19th MCU movie, 10 years of build-up and anticipation, in this movie did not disappoint me whatsoever. Building up all these characters into one movie and making it a complete epic movie, Thanos is the best villain this year, the best MCU villain. What he does at the end is just great. Why I love this movie is because Thanos wins at the end. He wins, he completely wipes out half of the universe and half of our favorite characters. I'm so excited for Endgame. I don't know what's going to happen. This is also the best theater experience I had this year. Everybody in my theater was having fun and bawling their eyes out. And Infinity War, it is an epic, man. It's my number two. All right, guys, this is it. This is number one. What can it be? What is it? What hasn't been said yet? My number one is... Mission Impossible Fallout is my favorite film this year. Rewatching it a second time, put it over Infinity War. This is the best action film this entire decade, and one of the best ever. Christopher McQuarrie coming back to direct this movie after Rogue Nation, which was my favorite, but now coming back, I was a little worried. What were they going to do? And it surprised the hell out of me. The action in this movie is non-stop. It is insane. The plain scene had me on the edge of my seat. The bathroom fight was intense. Tom Cruise running up and down freaking London in Paris is great. And the helicopter scene ended it off in a perfect bow. Tom Cruise is Ethan Hunt, once again, is so great. He's so damn good in this movie. Like, he gives an emotional performance. But Henry Cavill as August Walker, the main antagonist, might have stolen the whole entire film from me. He was a fantastic villain. Completely unpredictable what he was going to do next. Score by Lauren Balf is great. It's so intense, so enthrilling. It does a thing that the Mission Impossible movies do well, is build off the characters in the action sequences. This felt like a Christopher Nolan movie more than Macquarie. And I love this movie. And Fallout is great. It's my favorite film this year. There you have it, guys. Those were my top 10 best movies of 2018. What did you guys think of my list? Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Let me know your list down below in the comments. Let's have a great discussion. Thank you guys, as always, for watching this top 10 best list. And if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe today for more content. All my social media links are in the description down below. Click that notification bell on your way out. Have a happy new year, guys, and I will see you next year in the next video. Bye!